go. Hey, everyone, what's going on? Thank you for downloading the podcast yet another week. Hitting that subscribe button. Larry here. Anthony here. What's up? Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we just talked. The huge, the huge, the huge. Yeah, That's nothing new is. over here, and uh, it you know, it's still it's still warm in California. Is for it end warm of October? In- <laughs> We're getting to the end of October. Honestly, wasn't it like 104 degrees the other day? Yeah, I think it was la- uh, a couple weeks ago. Good um, lord. Yeah, but Saturday I get in my car and it's, my car's like 104, and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, and people and people around here are like, oh, it's October, it's going to be cool. I'm like, do you guys not go through this every year? <laughs> every year it doesn't get cool until November. I Although can, now, I can never. now you may consider it cool because it's like 80, 85. <laughs> I think it's like 60 something right now out here. Ah. Uh. I'm jealous and dropping rapidly. Yeah, this is the time of year when I miss, you know, fall weather. <laughs> well, you've been out in LA for what? How long? Not counting the year that you came back. Not counting the year I came back for work. Um, it'll be ten years in November. Alrighty. So I remember when you first went out to LA. Um, you know, doing your thing. You know, trying to get out, making it in the world. You know, hitting it big, um, as a lot of people do when they go to LA to try and. As you're working, as you're trying to, you know, offset your bills and your income, you know, L.A., Studio City, you're not too far from trying to win money on game shows. And you tried your luck at a few of them, no pun intended. Oh, yeah, there's no question about that. I mean, I've been uh, I've been a game show fanatic ever since I was a kid. It's my mom's fault. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, like, literally, I moved, I moved to L.A. Uh, in 2006, November 2006. I landed on a Friday. That Saturday, I was at a game show audition. The next day? (laughs) Literally, yeah. I wasn't even here for 24 hours. I was like (laughs) – because I had gotten to L.A. and I came here like – I moved all by myself. You know, like I don't know – I didn't know anybody here. So I'm like, what am I going to do? And I'm looking at like – and that's when I was on Craigslist, you know, because at the time you could still look for jobs on Craigslist because it was credible. And without getting killed? Right, without getting murdered. Um, so I was looking on Craigslist for jobs and then, you know, I was like, all right, you know, I moved out here for film. So I look in the TV film category and I see game show audition Saturday, you know, and I'm like, oh wait, that's tomorrow. Um, and it was for, um, deal or no deal and one (laughs) versus a hundred. Yes. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, and again, at this point, it's me in an empty studio apartment with a bed um, <laughs> that I put together that day. Um, oh, and by the way, this was the first week of November, and it was 90 degrees. <laughs> and welcome to L.A. Right. Welcome to L.A. It's like 90 degrees. Uh, no air conditioning in my apartment. Oofa. And I'm watching people on the street walking around in jackets <laughs> and pants, and I'm like – I'm sweating bullets. I'm <laughs> that like, New York sweating. weather's still in you. Right. So just me and my two cats. Um, <laughs> and I was like, okay. I was like, I'm going to do this. I go, I'm in LA. This is exciting. I'm like, I'm going to go on this game show audition. So next day, I go on the audition. Um, and I get past the first round of auditions because uh, For which at the show? time – uh, well, that's the thing. They at, they pretty much asked you which one you preferred. Okay. Um, and at the time, I know that you know I had known I'm more of a trivia guy. I'm not. So I was like, okay. I was like, um, I'll do one versus a hundred. Mm-hmm. So, um, so because you audition for you, the audition is a general audition, and then they direct you if they like you. Okay. So what happens is, you, like, you stand around a table with nine other people. So there are ten people surrounding a table with two people sitting there, and they basically ask you to pitch yourself in thirty seconds. So, you know, you have to be, you basically have to be animated and cartoonish, and make sure that you're giving them interesting information because if you don't, they just send you home. Yeah. So I'm watching everybody at my table getting not like literally like basically shut down because like <laughs> they're. Asking, oh well tell me a little bit something about yourself and people are like oh well you know i was born in la and <laughs> i do this for a living and everything and, you know so they're just like all right whatever goodbye you know so i do my shtick and i give them my entire life in 30 seconds very loud very animated get through the first round uh and then they ask me they go oh you know which one you know which do you prefer and i'm like well I go, i'm a big trivia guy i like trivia a lot so they they, they send me off to the one versus 100 section um and then after that I do uh, – they do a written test because it's a trivia. <laughs> you know, It's based on trivia. Do the written test 
And then I'm sitting there with like, you know, a couple hundred people. We're all doing the written test. And then they they grade that they literally grade the test while you're there. It was like, I don't remember. If, I think it was like maybe a 30 question test. Uh, and you had to get a certain amount to move on to the next round. So then they call out the names of the people who made it beyond that. So I was one of the ones who got there beyond you go. that. Okay. I get a call back. So it's like, okay, you guys are going to get called back. You'll come another day. You know, get an email, go back the next time. Now we're in a big sound stage. Uh, and for me, again, this is like my first week in LA. So I'm just like, oh, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> this I'm like, is, I'm like, I've this is the one versus 100. Week. Yeah, right. This, this is the one, one versus 100. Okay, so let's, let's back up for a second. So one versus 100 was a game show where hosted by Bob Saget, where it was one person who was answering questions and then there was the mob which was 100 people answering the same question and the idea was the one person had to outlast the mob and every time someone in the mob got a wrong question they were knocked out so it would start shrinking down and down and down so that that's the purpose of one versus 100 okay. so move on all right so moving on so i get to the sound stage and now they're doing on camera auditions ah uh so um, everybody had to get up in front of the camera and they would ask you a mock, um, mock, uh, a, a trivia question. And, um, you know, you would, you would answer and then, you know, they would tell you if you got it right or wrong and everything like that. So that's where I tripped <laughs> Oh, because I, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not an on-camera person. I mean, I'm a writer. Everything that I do is behind the camera, so and for good reason. Um, <laughs> so I get up in front of the camera, and the, the and it was such a perfect setup for me because the tri- the trivia question comes up. It's a strawberry shortcake question. <laughs> I grew up now. I grew up with two sisters, and so I knew strawberry shortcake, and I knew the, I knew the answer to the question because they asked which character in the show is a male. There was only one male character in the show, which was Huckleberry Pie. I was going to say, um, I remember that. Okay. Yeah, see, and I remember that. So I'm looking at this and I go, oh, I know the answer. So I'm like, all right. So I give them a little, you know, and they tell you to, you know, to vamp a little bit because they don't want you just standing on TV giving an answer. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm really glad this question came up because, you know, what? I grew up with two sisters. I know the show really, really well. And I know that there was only one male character on that show and that's Huckleberry Pie. So that's my answer. <laughs> give the answer. And he's like, oh, he's like. You ju- he's like, you're correct. You just won $100,000. <laughs> and, and I froze. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, the first but, time I'm hearing this story, by the way. Yeah, so completely <laughs> froze. And I'm standing there. And then he repeats himself. He's like, you just won $100,000. So then I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, uh, oh, pardon my <laughs> Don't language. Don't worry about it. So then, so then, I, so then I, you know, I try and like act really <laughs> animated and surprised. And he's like, all right, go sit down. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> like talking into the mic, like too close. Like, uh, thank yeah, you. <laughs> so, um, so I I got so close to being a contestant on the show. However, because it's one versus a hundred, even though I didn't get to be a contestant on the show, I was a member of the mob. Yes, and I got to be on the game show, and I recorded that the week of Thanksgiving. So, like, literally, my first within my first three weeks in L.A. I was on television. <laughs> you and were I was on yep. a game show. Yep. I did not. I did not win any money, but it was just a, like what a great experience. Like you, when you first move out here, it was amazing. You didn't get like any sort of like partying gift or whatever for just being in the mob. No, they didn't. No, the only way you won anything in the mob is if the contestant got their question wrong. Oh, that's right. Any active members left yeah, in the yeah, mob yeah. would split the money that they had I about that. Uh, accumulated. But I thought you would so, have gotten like a little something just for being there. I got the I got the experience of being. <laughs> on the show. Welcome to L.A. Holy cow! Welcome to L.A. <laughs> But um, yeah, so so um, j- you know, obviously to segue into uh, our topic for this week, you know, I thought this was a great co- topic for us because I've been playing game show video games my entire life, which is what transitioned into me being, you know, coming out here and auditioning because I've auditioned for like ten or twelve <laughs> game shows, and I've been on, I've been on it two. No, I've been on two, and I've been in the audience for like two or three other ones. So like, you know, game shows like in my blood, and I did win five thousand dollars on a game show on Game Show Network. <laughs> oh, I remember we watched it. Oh, we yes. that's it's a story for a different time. We'll tell you when, but that was that was the best. <laughs> it was the best because I won. <laughs> no, really, you did good. Except for I remember there was one question, uh, <laughs> there was one answer you screwed up. Do you remember what it was? 
What, uh, was it the Stephen Van Zandt one? No, no, no. That no, that's I think how you lost on one versus one hundred. No, on the on the Game Show Network one, it was Molotov. The answer was Molotov oh, cocktail, yes, Atola, or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> it totally came out wrong. It was supposed to be Molotov cocktail. I said Atola. Like, uh, okay. oh my god. You know what? Didn't uh, matter. No, still that I was very happy. That's all that right, counts. Yeah. Yes, that was great. That was a great oh, experience. Anyway. Let's move what, to video games. What show would you have liked to been on, but at least you got to play the video game of it? Because I can tell you, for mine, I and this game, I put High Rollers for the Commodore 64. We're going back now. Yep, I uh, had that game, too. Ah, uh, that game ruled. Both the game show itself and um, I think Wink Martindale may have been the host. Yes, Wink yes. was. And um, and then, you know, High Rollers, it's just you, you had a board of... 10 numbers, 0 to 9, you used to roll these giant dice. So, of course, when I was little, I wanted these giant dice. They were as big as my head. Uh, and then you just had to the, the, knock the numbers off the board. Um, I used to play that game on end on the PC, on uh, uh, Commodore 64, High Rollers. Yeah, no, same thing with me. Uh, I loved that game. Um, oh, oh. I remember... I don't know if I, I may still, I may still have it somewhere. Oh my actually, gosh, like you? holy cow! Or a, or a CD? Yeah, like you know, I w- I got to a point when I you know when we started to lose the floppy disk drives, mm-hmm. where I started uh, transferring things onto uh, uh, CDRs. Oh, so Good I may idea. still have high rollers hiding somewhere. Oh man, uh, but yeah, the absolutely loved that game. I used to play that and Card Sharks all yes. the time. Yes, same on the same system. Card Sharks so, was awesome. It was always awesome. Card Sharks were good. They always had, they're, 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 at least on the game show, I remember their, their questions were always, you know, this is, we're talking late 70s, early 80s. So, you know, that's when, um, sexist and sexism ran rampant on television. Um, but, oh, yes. uh, the game itself, you know, just, you pick a card, next card higher or lower, and, uh, very simple. These game shows back then, that's what made it fun. They were so simple. There wasn't really anything to them short of maybe a quiz show. Um, like Card Sharks. High Rollers, Classic Concentration. I played yeah, that I was, on Nintendo uh, often. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, based on video game game shows, I think if there was one I really wanted to go on, it was Classic Concentration. Yeah. But then at the time, I was only like you know 10 years old or mm-hmm. 8 years old or whatever it was. It's like, what was I going to do with a brand new car? <laughs> <laughs> Very true, um, <laughs> but uh, you just want you just want a Miata, uh, yay! <laughs> looking um, looking for your parents. Mom, Where are you? Yeah, I was like, my mom and dad can drive it. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Uh, but classic concentration was very was awesome. I'm trying to. I played also um, on a lot. Wait, of wait, them- wait! Before you move, before you move on to that, classic concentration was a game show where they had number. They had a numbered board one through twenty four or twenty five. I can't remember. It was one through twenty five, and the object is behind every panel there was a prize. So it was like, and they were like grandfather clocks ovens a ski trip things like that the object was to find it was basically like memory you had to find the matching tiles and then when you found those matching tiles they would disappear from the board and then on the board behind it was a puzzle you needed to solve so it's basically like a a phrase but it was like pictionary in a way there were Mm -hmm. pictures Mm -hmm. that would formulate the words and you had to guess the phrase to win the round and if you won two rounds you got to go to the bonus round for a chance to win a car, I just want to explain that because maybe people don't. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's it's these games again, the simplicity of them. But nowadays with game shows, I mean, there's barely any on TV. But still, um, I you know they are few and far between. Yeah, game shows today, uh, but uh, also, and then you had like, I mean, look, let's let's might as well just just talk about them, get them out of the way. You have your Jeopardies, you have your Wheel of Fortunes. I mean, that's mm-hmm. been on every incarnation of any system that's ever existed, um, and those are all straightforward games. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they, yeah, they just follow the same format, and you know, those games I remember playing all the time to the point where, you know, the categories would repeat. So exactly. then I would always, you know, so I would win like a ton of money because I knew all the answers. That was the biggest problem with the with these games back then. They would repeat. Yeah, they were limited quickly too. They would repeat. Oh yeah, Wheel of Fortune all the time. Like the puzzles, like I would, I wouldn't even have to spin anymore at a certain <laughs> point because I knew what the puzzles were. And then even like when they'd come out with like. Wheel of Fortune, like Family Edition, Wheel of Fortune Junior, uh, mm-hmm. Super Jeopardy, Jeopardy 25th Anniversary. They're just, and a lot of times they're just recycled with a few more questions in them um, because they just kind of spit out the same game, maybe a little bit of a graphical overhaul, um, yeah. and uh, like uh, like a hundred new questions. 
Yeah, see, yeah, that was all. I mean, that was always the tough thing with you know, especially game show games. Mm-hmm. Um, that limitation. I mean, now, now, you know, today, thanks to you know, you know, Xbox Live and PlayStation Network, because of the online capability, mm-hmm. you can download expansion packs, so yep. you can add questions to games. So they have that ability now to expand them. Back then, you just had what was on the cartridge. Exactly, and not only that, I think I'm trying to remember if it was either like you don't know Jack or maybe Trivial Pursuit on the on the newer systems that actually like the system keeps track of the question so it purposely doesn't repeat which yeah, is pretty cool definitely. i mean at some point you're eventually going to get to it but it takes a while yeah it definitely does take a while but we're talking about games we used to play as kids and that's okay <laughs> repetition was great um, um hollywood um, squares you remember playing hollywood squares on yeah the i do remember playing hollywood squares and what i what used to amuse me about that were the lame jokes they put in that game because <laughs> they had to be so pc because you know the actual game show was like you know a you know a, an 80s version of match game where you know the celebrities would have their little innuendos when they would answer their you know when they would crack their jokes and stuff of course you couldn't have that on of the course, actual yeah. video game because kids are playing these games and so uh, it was loaded with lame jokes oh totally and hollywood squares is it's game of tic-tac-toe with human beings pretty much you know yes question agree disagree and and what i i don't know if you realized it um I, I, again when you were younger, when I was younger, I didn't realize half the answers or, or mo- almost all the answers that the celebrities were given were were pre like were pre written for them. Oh, I had no idea. A lot of them were because I mean, a lot of them were just completely wrong answers. And if you ever go back and watch, like you always see them kind of look down sometimes. <laughs> and, oh, so um, they were looking at the script. I think they would have like a like a goofy answer or sometimes a joke answer, um, and and. Hollywood Squares on Nintendo uh, fell into that again. You know, after a while, you play like three or four times. Um, you know, it starts repeating on you, but then you're just playing tic tac toe at that point. Yeah, that's exactly what it came down to. You're yeah. playing tic tac toe against the computer or against, you know, a friend that you would have over. Exactly. Um, and especially if you own the game and they didn't, you would just kick their asses. Did you often, now, I, growing up, only child over here, and you mentioned you had two sisters. When you played these games, did you often, like, get a chance to play with your siblings, with your family? Because only once in a while I'd play with my parents, not because they didn't want to play, they, just, they were busy and I didn't have anyone else to really play with. No, you know, I, game show, I, um, if there was a game show or board game-esque kind of game that my sister and I would play all the time. It was Anticipation. Ah, I'll count that one. Yeah, it's not yeah, an official which, which, game show, but it's like it's like Win, Loser, Draw, or Pictionary, anything like that. Yeah, which we also had was Win, Loser, Draw, which is another <laughs> yeah. game show game. Uh, but Anticipation was such a great game. It was just a, it was basically a board game where you could have up to four players. You would walk around on a board, and there were the tiles were color coded, um, and there were four colors. And when you landed on the color, um, it would be a you know um, a screen would pop up for that color and it was a category so it was like science or art or something and then a picture would start getting drawn on the screen and the object was to ring in and name what the picture was and once you collected all of the colors for that level you would level up until you got to the final I think it was level three? where you won three levels there were three there were three levels and uh, then you win yeah so you would be competing against three other people um you know and whoever won one it was just such a such a simple concept for a video game and it was just so much fun also because on nes it was like it was probably one of the very few games that had four player capability and not only that i think it was maybe the first almost original board game on the uh, might have, it probably was yeah. yeah or maybe it could have been the one of game. yeah um yeah, no, Anticipation was very fun. Anticipation was cool because, like, the first level, maybe the first two levels, it was, like, connect the dots. But then you get to that third level, and there was no dots. and There were no dots. You, you couldn't guess at first. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, Double Dare. Do you ever play Double Dare? I never played Double Dare. Double Dare was a game show. First of all, I wanted to be on desperately. Never, obviously never did. But, um... Well, if we were friends back then, we would have been. Maybe, maybe. Fly all the way out to L.A. <laughs> The, I wasn't in LA when actually, I was Actually, they are, I think they're bringing, they're, they're oh, doing, they filmed it, that's right. Uh, yeah. They're doing a double dare, no, maybe in Florida, actually, they're doing, now no, that I think about yeah, it. No, they're doing a double dare, uh, like Thanksgiving Reunion. week, aren't they? Oh, like is it? That's what it is? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving 30th, week, they're doing, they're doing a special one episode of Double Dare with Mark Summers as the host. 30th anniversary. Oof. Yeah. 
I hope I actually hope it's just like a like almost like a pilot pitch and if it does well they'll bring it back because that would be awesome. That would be awesome. And I feel like either Buzzer or Game Show Network, I think is gonna start airing Double Dare. Oh, that would I be think. Great. Now there's another game show called Double Dare that has nothing to do with the one that we're gonna talk about, which is also currently on either Buzzer or Game Show Network. Okay, um, we'll leave that alone. There's no video game related to it. Yeah. Getting back to the Double Dare Double video Dare, game. both on Nintendo and on, on well, Commodore 64 when I had it. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, it was horrible. It was it was a button masher, but it was like one of the button mashers that like you had to run A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. You know what I mean? Just keep tapping them. Yep. And, um, some of the games, I just, I, I never figured out how to do any of the physical challenges because the instruction book had never really explained how to play the game. And whether it's the keyboard or the controller, my guy would just stand there for 60 seconds and that was it. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. Fun game to watch, horrible game to play. That's unfortunate. Uh, you mentioned last week American Gladiators. That, yes. You know, great game show, great oh, television God, show. Well, I mean,. Saturday mornings were like, you know, when we were kids, I'm sorry, I think we had the golden age of Saturday morning oh, because agreed. Saturday morning cartoons in the 80s were fantastic. You had friggin' you had Transformers, you had G.I. Joe, you had uh, GoBots if you were so into that, you had Voltron. They were like so many fun game shows. And then you would cap it off with um, WWF Superstars yeah. Noon. at 11 a.m. And then 12 o'clock was American Gladiators. Yeah. And American Gladiators was a game show where – all right, think about uh, – I'm trying to think of like uh, an equivalent to today. Well, they've had American Gladiators in the last five years. Oh, yeah, that's right. They have done that. So like you know, American Gladiators are you know uh, four people, two men, two women are competing in different challenges against the gladiators, which mm-hmm. are like you know the beefed up super people. Um, <laughs> you know, and you know one person would win and move on and then eventually somebody won like 50 grand or 100 grand at the end of the whole thing. Something like thing. that, yeah. But – yeah, I remember owning the video game for NES and Uh-oh. Uh-oh, hold on. Oh boy. We have technical difficulty, folks. <laughs> we are recording live. Okay, um I'm going to pause it here so we'll be right back. All right, well, <laughs> we're back. Um, having, Hello. Uh, technical difficulties are resolved. So, um, Thankfully. I think we've got to pay the Skype bill. <laughs> yeah, oops, that's my bad. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's get right into it. Let's pick up right where we left off. You were talking about American Gladiators, and um, we were talking about the video game American Gladiators. Um, it really didn't, it didn't play like the game show. No, it it. I mean, it had it had Elements. the challenges. Yeah, no, no, it had the challenges from the game show, and it did play like the game no, show. No, no, no. You, you skated through. You had to save somebody. The NES version, that is, at least. Oh, okay. The Super Nintendo version was like literally a lift from oh, the game show. That yes, I'm sorry. Yes, the Super NES. Yeah. What well, you're right. The so, NES yeah, so version was a side scroller. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say because in the Super Nintendo one, you you did six challenges. Mm-hmm. You did six different uh, challenges, and then you did the the final challenge, which was the the last maze run through thing. Yep, yep. Um, yeah. So the the Super Nintendo version was by far more, you know, was by far superior because oh, yeah. it was it was exactly what the game show was. Yeah, the NES one, I feel like they took a side scroller and just turned it into American Gladiators. <laughs> oh, that by all means like, they sure did. Yeah, they just, they were just like, oh, let's just do this. But yeah, like I remember like on the Super Nintendo one, like playing the wall. Where mm-hmm. you're climbing a wall and you had to get to the top before the gladiator caught you and pulled you off mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, I remember swing shot, which I could never get right, where you would, <laughs> it was a first person thing and you'd have to swing into a gladiator and try and knock them off their pedestal. Yes. I always, always screwed that up. And then joust, uh, where you were jousting. <laughs> I mean, there were so many fun games on that. Again, I, I think I still have it. Um, the the SNES game and uh, I love yeah there's just something about that game I just love playing it <laughs> do you remember a game first of all do you remember a game show called um, roller games maybe rock and roller games no it was roller games and I watched it every week it was okay. on Saturday yeah was, they played it it was on Saturday there was a video game right based on I'm trying to remember because when you're talking yeah, about American was, Gladiators I'm thinking of this game yeah I remember renting that game from the video store <laughs> uh, roller games and, and you know after a while it was just kind of like 
Well, at, at the end of the day, you're really just skating in a circle. Well, yeah, it's, know, it's Roller Jam. You know, everyone yeah. knows Roller Jam. It's just, you know, everyone on roller skates beating each other up. But it actually had, like... Roller games was kind of like a WWE version of legit mm-hmm. roller derby. That's a roller derby. That's what I'm looking for. Roller um, but roller, <laughs> roller games did the video because I don't remember playing the game. I just remember of the game. Now, in the actual show, if there was a tie, they would have these skaters called the Gator Skaters and they would go around the track once and then try and throw each other into a, a pool of alligators. Do you remember this? Uh, I no, remember this. I, I, I don't remember that part. I think you're on your own. <laughs> no, no, it really <laughs> happened. As a, I'm looking even at the thing. As a tiebreaker, two skaters would skate around. Oh, I'm getting phone calls. Um, involve traditional robotary elements, and then a pit full of alligators. <laughs> and they hey, called them gator what? skaters. <laughs> you know what, though? That, back then, you needed to do what you had to do for ratings, okay? <laughs> but um, I don't as, think that's... I don't think that transitioned into a video game. No, no. It, well, it did, but I don't think the, the Gator Skater part did. Not the Gator Skater. No, not at all. Uh, uh, and then, really, the other, as far as the old school systems, because there was more game shows that came out later, um, Family Feud, you know, it was kind of the other big one. Yeah, I remember, again, Family Feud I had on Genesis, I think. No, I think I had it on both. I think I had it on Super Nintendo and Genesis at some point. I don't know why, but... Uh, I used to love that game show, except the one flaw in the concept of... You would win five thousand dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. That was originally some, and yeah. then they made up things where you can win like up to ten or whatever it is. Yeah, you're splitting that amongst five people. <laughs> what do you? I mean, but it's I family. mean, I get it. It's like five grand, but I'm like, you're each getting a thousand dollars. Well, back then, uh, that was probably pretty big. It wasn't that long. No, I'm t- like even. Oh, even today. Like, oh. Even today, it's like the most you can win is like twenty five, and I'm like, okay, five grand's at least better. I'm like, but it's not that great. <laughs> anyway, but the, I remember the I remember the um, the uh, Super Nintendo and Genesis version was the Ray Combs version. Ah, of, yes. Of um, the late Ray Combs, mm-hmm. uh, the Ray Combs version of Family Feud with the uh, bullseye round. Yes, start, I was just thinking of allowed, that. Yeah, yeah, which allowed you to um, build up more money. For your team mm-hmm. before you got into the actual Family Feud game, mm-hmm. and that was fun. No, that was. Uh, um, yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed playing that game, and that game to me was different enough. Like I don't think I played it enough where it, like it kept it repeated like crazy, but eventually it would repeat. Yeah, like the, every other game. But going back before we move yeah yeah anywhere else, um, I have to bring this game up before I forget. Uh, NES. Had a, uh, a game based on an MTV game show. Oh, yes. Called Remote Control. Yep. <clears throat> yep. And Remote Control was uh, a game show where three people competed against each other. It's basically a trivia show. Uh, music trivia, of course, because it was MTV. And back then, MTV focused on playing music videos. Uh, yep. Um, with, with occasional shows here and there. Um and the three contestants would sit in recliners <laughs> and they would choose a channel on the television and that channel had uh, a, a category and then you answer the trivia questions in that category. <clears throat> the key thing with this show where there were there were two things I enjoyed about this show besides the music trivia was one, it introduced the world to Adam Sandler. Yeah. Because Adam Sandler was the I don't know. The, like the, the goofy. Not, he wasn't. Yeah, he was like the, he was like the goofy sidekick on, yeah. the sh- on, right, on the game show. And then the other thing was when you finished a round, or the, when you got before when you got to the final round, only two of the three contestants would play. Whoever had the lowest score would be eliminated from the final round. And what they would do is, when the person got eliminated, their recliner would turn all the way backwards like it would go all the way recline and go backwards and they would tumble off of it <laughs> and fall like into the ether and they would like smoke would come out and they would disappear um, and i just always found that funny because i'm like wow i go th- that could hurt <laughs> just fall wrong anyway so they made they made a version of this game show on the nes and they did it they did it exactly the way that it was yep. in all of its awfulness <laughs> um and i again i still own it I still own the actual NES cartridge, um, <laughs> and I just yeah I just remember having fun playing it, and you know it was just a cool 
idea to have a, a game show focusing just on you know MTV music videos. Yeah, right. No, that was it was a fun game, fun game show. Uh, I that was a renter for me. I, I rented that definitely. That was on my high list of renting often. So, um, but it's um, someone else. Who's? Do you remember the host of that show? I'm trying to remember the host of Remote Control. No, you know my the head that the, the the name that keeps popping up in my head is uh, Kurt Loder, but he was uh, MTV News. Oh, yeah, Kurt Loder, good lord! And I don't know why I'm thinking of him. So, but I remember the guy, like the guy who was the host, would always like again. He would always like have these little snappy comebacks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Ken Ober, uh, nope, nope. Ken Ober was the Ken Ober. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Um, oh, maybe Ken Ober. Uh, no, I think that's the guy who created it. Uh, oh yeah, no, Ken Olber. Also, Colin Quinn, the comedian. Colin Quinn got his start That's right. I remember, on the I show remember as Colin well. Yeah, Quinn being on the show. Yes. Wow. Actually, later, Colin Quinn originally, and then Adam Sandler, Dennis Leary was even uh, kind of on the show for a little while. Oh, I don't remember Dennis. Leary. And Carrie War. Where is she from? I don't Carrie know. Warr. Oh, she was in Eight Legged Freaks and Sliders. Oh, they. Oh, she was Maggie. Like... Maggie Beckett. Oh, she was Maggie and Sliders. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Nice. Cool. Uh, yeah, no, that remote control was definitely... So that was definitely one I wanted to bring up because I just remember... I mean, it, it, it wasn't a good video game. Let's, let's just... Let's uh, no, that no. Out. Great yeah, show. It was not a good video game. But, game. Yeah, but it was, just, it was just fun, especially at that time when M- like MTV was so huge back then. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, um, to have a... You know, to just play that game that was based on, you know, music videos was fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, then ga- and then there was a game show game... Uh, there was a few game show games not based on game shows, just were game show like. Sort yes. of on N sixty four had Chef's Love Shack. Yes, Chef's Love Shack, which um, I actually owned on the Sega Dreamcast. I didn't own it on uh, N sixty four, um, and it was. was uh, I don't know if it was on N sixty four. It was definitely right. on. It was definitely on Dreamcast. But uh, I remember buying that game because you know, again, it was like you had four players because it was Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and. Cartman as the contestants um, and of course the questions were racy like the show and I was like oh my god this is so cool it's just like and of course at this point South Park was at its pinnacle um, they had the South Park game on N64 which was like uh, a golden eye yep, yep. kind of game yep. where you would run through South Park and throw sh- stuff at each other <laughs> yeah. um, but I remember playing Chef's Love Shack and that was another one but uh, it was it was definitely a poorly done game it yeah they like were one of those games that they were rushing it out it was yeah. one of those games let's rush it out and just make a buck on it because we're doing so well it also had um it, it was a game show slash mario party type game that's really what it was yeah so it so, did have mini games involved yeah. and you know what bringing up mario party i mean i think especially we've been talking game shows but also in a way board games um the mario party games were probably some of the most successful like original board game concepts Oh no uh, doubt for video for the video gaming industry. I mean, in fact, they just came out with number ten on Wii U. Wii I think U has so. Mario I think Party so. ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there have been ten Mario Party games, at least. There's a couple on Game Boy that aren't numbered. So there's, right. so there's a bunch like of them. They, they, yeah, they, those. Uh, I have the first three mm-hmm. on N64, and those are kind of hard to come by now. They're hard to they're hard to find, uh, and and I know they're a little pricey, but um, they were definitely worth. I remember. I remember. Um, getting blisters in the middle <laughs> of my palm because you would take because a lot of the things involved you taking the um taking the joystick and moving it in a circle yep, yep. and to do it faster my sister and her friends and i would just take yep. a, put it you know middle of the palm and just circle it around quickly and i just burned through my skin i think that's why they only did that for the first mario party game and i remember someone selling like mario party gloves that yes. had like protector on the a, palm. Yeah, you literally needed a glove because yep. you were pulling, you were ripping your skin off. But man, <laughs> let me tell you something. We could not stop playing that game. I remember uh, we would play bumper balls yes. nonstop. Yep, that yep. mini game where you were just on top of a ball, bumping into each other, trying to throw yourself off an island. <laughs> and there was a lot of there. There was a lot of good board games too, which we'll get into later. But like, kind of Monopoly was a, a game show. Monopoly, of course, on various systems. Uh, never really, actually, not uh, now that I mention it, not the vi- the vi- uh, oh, excuse me, the game show version was never a video game version, so never mind on that one with Monopoly. But um, there was, you would think there'd be more, like Press Your Luck didn't come yeah. out for a home console until the Wii, which yeah, I'm shocked. Yeah, I, I know there was a PC version I downloaded at one point in the mid two thousands, like somewhere around the mid two thousands, somebody made like that. Um, 
I think High Rollers and a few other ones. Mm -hmm. Like just out of nowhere, all of a sudden. But yeah, no, they would. Yeah, they would. Considering how popular Pressure Luck was, you think somebody would have. Yeah, you think somebody would have licensed that uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe it was just. Timing. They couldn't get the license, well, but no, maybe they just they just couldn't get the license. That so. too. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. Um, but it just it would have lent itself such an easy game to do on the Nintendo. Couple of well, trivia, not even trivia questions. Couple questions, and then just a randomizer. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, maybe the idea, maybe uh, and maybe the reason why a lot of those didn't wind up becoming video games is because those game shows aired in prime time for adults. That's and at true. the time when we were playing video games, you know, video games were for kids, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, except, you know, with some exceptions. But, you know, for the, that's for the most part. So that maybe that's why only a handful of them got made. And to be honest with you, the ones that did get made, I mean, I don't think any of them were wildly successful. I mean, maybe your Jeopardies and Wheel of Fortunes. But when you talk about your classic concentrations, high rollers, card sharks yeah. type of stuff, I mean, I don't know how well any of these did and that's that could be why we didn't see that many and i think they probably didn't do well because of the even back then everyone knew just about the repetitiveness so yeah that was the thing too it's like you knew you're buying a game that's just not gonna lend itself to repetition very long yeah you know um but you know to go into more because i don't i can't think of that many more there's really uh, not none that i can think uh, of uh the only other one that that popped in my head i mean you, you mentioned you don't know jack yeah. you don't know jack's been around since like the mid 90s i think because yep. i had like i had like three or four versions of it on my pc and i love that game the insults were great the questions <laughs> yeah. were fun yep um you know and i know they have a version now on it um on xbox live and they PS had on ps1 yeah. Yep. No, no. I know they had it on PS One also, but I'm oh, like nowadays. Like, no. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah like yeah. it still it still exists, which yep. is really cool. Um, but there was um, the only other game show one that I remember playing on, uh, and it was on PC, um, was The Weakest Link. Oh yeah. Do you remember that game show? Yeah. I yep. love that game. I, I had it for PS One. I had it for PS One. Yep. I had it on PC, and I bought it on PC specifically because it had more questions. Oh yeah, um, no doubt. But the concept of that game was you had a you know you had a very snooty British host who would insult you when you got your questions wrong, and there were like seven or eight of you who would answer in the round, and the idea was to build up money by getting questions right consecutively. Mm-hmm. And if somebody got a question wrong, if they didn't bank your money at that time, your money would drop back down to zero, and you'd have to start over again. And then at the end of the round. Everybody had to decide to vote somebody off the team, and you would do that until it got whittled down to the final two, and then you went into the final round, and whoever won won the whole pot that was raised throughout the game. Mm-hmm. Um, great show, great concept. Again, the host was great. I think her name was Ann something. I don't remember. Um, yeah, I think it was Ann Robinson or something like mm-hmm. that. I can't remember her last name, but she would, you know, she would use that dry british dry humor <laughs> to just insult the hell out of the contestants and um the video game did that really well especially on pc it was yeah. really interesting to see especially when she would pick on me i would always laugh <laughs> and then of course you know you are the weakest link goodbye and just off yes. off you go um millionaire so, uh, uh who wants to be a millionaire yep. they made a bunch of those oh yeah they made a bunch of those for my think playstation on yeah right? yo totally totally i had it on ps1 and it was just it was yeah. a fun game it was just it's just straight trivia. That's all it was. Yeah, I forgot which one I I forgot which one I had it on, but I did have it. And then, of course, um, when I moved back to New York, I don't know if I told you this either, but when I moved back to New York, they had moved Who Wants to Be a Millionaire to Stanford, Connecticut. Oh, oh, um, I remember so, you told me. Yeah, yeah. So I auditioned for that game show <laughs> with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> we wound up we didn't we, we didn't wind up passing the test but we wound up in the audience mm-hmm. and then they picked me to play a mini game that they they were doing mini games like at the end of the show mini trivia games so i got on that show and i won like 250 <laughs> you should make a movie just about you going on all these different game shows and your, your life winning money on the road no, I know. I should really make a list of all the ones that I've auditioned for because they're, I'm telling you, I've auditioned for like 10 or 12 different ones. I think ones. we need to – I think we'll talk about that on, on the other show. That would be yeah, fun. I'll get you thing. on my show. Um, get, yeah, just other games that I've played, like game show board game ones. Trivial Pursuit I had on Sega CD. Ooh, yeah. Back, yeah, back when Sega CD was a yeah. thing for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I remember just enjoying that because, again, because I, Sega CD was like the first like CD system. Pretty much. It had – yeah, it held more questions, so that mm-hmm, was kind of mm-hmm. cool. 
Um, and then uh, one of my favorites on Sega CD was um, Star Wars Chess. <laughs> I would call it, it well board game. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Well, it, it's a board game. It's not yeah. a game show. It's a board game. But yeah. you know, but the cool thing about that concept was it's a Star Wars themed chess board. But when you would take a pe- when you would uh, attack your opponent and take a piece off the board, there would be a little mini battle mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. between the characters, and they would fight. And then, of course, if you you know your piece was going to win, it would win, and it was awesome. Yeah, and there was some violent. Um, death scenes actually in that yes, game. Yes, I remember. Yeah, because like you, would, you know, Darth Vader would take out his lightsaber and literally chop you in half. <laughs> like, it's great. Yeah, it was. It weird. was, just, it was- yeah, it was some great. There was some great stuff in there. I loved that game. <laughs> um, yeah, board game wise, as far as on the systems, really just Monopoly for me. That was, and you know, well, the Mario well, Clue. Clue was one I don't of think my I've ever favorite- played Clue on the home wow. system. But Clue is one of my uh, – and I'll still play it. I'll still play it on my Super Nintendo because I absolutely love it. Um, Clue is one of my favorite board games of all time, if not my favorite board game of all time. In fact, I collect different versions of Clue. Oh, do you really? I didn't know that. Yeah, so I have like I knew you liked five, it. Yeah, I have so. like four or five um, different versions of Clue. Wow. And um, – yeah, so the SNES one, the cool thing about it is you would play the game. It's legit. It's literally the board game. Mm-hmm. And then when you would make your accusations, it would run a little animation with a story. So, you know, if you said, like, Colonel Mustard in the knife, uh, in the ballroom with the knife, it would go to a cutscene and you'd be in the ballroom and then it would give you a little story on the bottom where, you're, like, you're searching the room. Um, and then it would tell you, all right, you know, the knife is not in the ballroom or Colonel Mustard didn't have huh. the knife or whatever. And you would do that and then eventually, you know, you would play the game all the way down to the end. Interesting. Um, yeah. So absolutely loved playing Clue on Super Nintendo. Hmm. Um, I know they made it for 360. It was on one of the family game night. Oh, um, OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I never bought I never bought that one. Yeah. But I just always go back to the SNES one. And it was oh, super fun. They added on Genesis, too. Oh wow! I don't. Yeah, I don't remember Clue, but that's cool. Good, gr- yeah. yeah, great board game. So, yeah, it's a great board game, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm a big board game player. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just bought it. I just bought a new one uh, yesterday. It's uh, Back to the Future. Really? Yeah, it's a Back to the Future board game. How does that uh, play? Please tell me there's a bowling uh, ball in it. Uh, no, unfortunately, <laughs> there's no bowling ball. Where? Oh, it's in the trunk of my car. Um, so yeah, the is Back it to new the- or is it old? No, it's new. Oh wow! It's a new board game. Basic, basically, the uh, yeah, basically, it's about it's about achieving. Ultimately, you have to achieve the most victory points throughout mm-hmm. the game. But you do that by traveling through time between 1955, 1985, and 19, 2015, and completing events that are supposed to happen in those timelines to keep the space time continuum straight. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's a, it was actually really cool. We we tested it out. My friends and I tested it for a little bit last night. It was a bit mm-hmm. clunky because it's a new game. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing that out. It was actually really fun. Oh, to check that out, we have to do a special edition episode of board games uh, because oh, you definitely yeah. have a ton of them. So I know uh, I don't know if we can go for three hours. <laughs> well, that's all the time I have on this thing, anyways. Three. So uh, okay, perfect. <laughs> and with that, uh, I think we're gonna. So any other any other uh, game any game shows you wish they made into video games. I know for me, it was Press Your Luck back in the day. No, Press Your Luck was definitely, like, for me, like, that needed to be one. If there was any way for them to make Match Game into uh, oh, a video wow, game, yeah. I would have loved a Match Game video game. But yeah. again, you, you you definitely couldn't put those insults into a video game. <laughs> I, don't know uh, if you, I don't know if you're allowed to put Charles, Charles Nelson Riley on a video game. <laughs> no, I think it's illegal. Um <laughs> No, and I'm trying to think of like because you know video games started to I mean game shows started to you know kind of slowly fade away. Yeah. I mean Pyramid was another one that I never saw as a mm-hmm. video game that mm-hmm. I thought would have been fun. I mean, granted, I think now that's a little like, tough. I think to one. do. Yeah, like now, like you get you can play. You know, they had Prices Right on Wii and Pressure yes. Lock, like you said. I was like, but you know, those types of games like Pyramid would have been fun. Password would have been fun. Mm. Um, but I agree with you. Pressure Lock was probably the one that I would have loved yeah. to have played when I was a kid. The go-to. All yes. Well, with that, now I'm going to want to go and watch Buzzer, watch uh, uh, Game Show Network, all these TV shows now with the uh, with the game shows. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go research and see if I can audition. For something that's been- <laughs> <laughs> and with that, folks, thank you very much for listening. Go watch your game shows. Go play your game show games. Follow us everywhere, especially on the Facebook page. We'll catch you next week. Good night, everybody. Good night.